Hello, this is Father Jeremy with Father Timothy Mayamba Masaba from Uganda, part two. So, how are you? Fine, and how are you, Father Jeremy? Good, good, good. So, we just did this whole video, but doing it again for the second time, because I didn't press record or thing. But anyways, yesterday we were talking about how you came from a big family, and you went to the seminary, and you became a priest. So, after you were ordained a priest, usually, like me, you're a regular diocesan priest, you'd be... The, the, the preacher, the teacher, the offerer of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the l person who helps out at funerals and, and visits sick and forgives sins and, and, and helps uh, the people in a local area called a parish. Did they send you for any special training? or What was your career after you were ordained a priest like? And how old were you when you were ordained? Yeah, it would have been 20 Seven years. Twenty. Yeah, twenty-six. Twenty-six, twenty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been a priest for thirty-five years, and you're sixty years old. Congratulations, Thank you. Father. Thank you. No white hair. It's incredible. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> the Lord. So you went, mm. got, and so they, they I, sent you where? Yeah, uh, like I mentioned because um, actually my bishop about that time, he he was convinced that after our seminary training. We needed to be assigned to a seasoned priest. Mm. A seasoned priest would be able to help induct you into mm. the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want to do. Every time you one was ordained, he never pointed you to a parish alone. He always put you under a seasoned priest. So I happened to have that opportunity and I went through three seasoned priests. Mm -hmm. One for three years second one for two years, another one for two years. Mm. And after that, I was uh, given an opportunity to go for a little course in communications, ah. which I did in a neighboring country, Kenya. And after finishing that course, well, I was, mm. I was always excited, I thought, because we have a communication center in the mm -hmm. institution, um, printery, media, and so on. So Radio? Out of excitement, I yeah. knew uh, perhaps was preparing me to take care of the, the communication center. When I came back, lo and behold, he appointed me in the villages very far away. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when I sit down to think about that, I think that was great. Mm -hmm. These bishops have uh, big inspiration. So that was big great for me because I was able to begin by practicing my communication right in the village. Mm. And forget about all the things I've been excited about. I went right in the village to practice among the people. Nice. And it was only after that three years, then he brought me to that communication, um, printery and media place, mm. where I was. I stayed there for about, um, I worked in that place for about six years. And then I brought in the radio. I established a radio also mm. in that place, Radio Maria. And it's still going. We'll, we'll put a link. On. So this yeah. now we have a sec. I was the first director uh -huh. of the radio after establishing it. And now I hand it over to another priest who is running it. Just occurred to me, I, I went for four years. I got a degree, uh, a Bachelor of Fine Arts, and my major was called Studio for Interrelated Media. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, both have the, uh, the media uh, degree on top of our regular degrees for priesthood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you went, and, and then your, your current assignment, you're five years now, you've been the pastor of a mountain area where some places, some of the small communities of people that you serve, yeah. you, they're only accessible by foot. Uh, those areas, I, you, you were telling me. Yeah, huh? I have been uh, signed pastor in the various parishes and uh, the, the last parish where I was doing the communications was the town parish and I, I lived there for eight years. When you say town parish, I think you, you, it's like it a city. In the town, yeah, like so, a city, yes. Like a city, more yeah. like, less, r less rural. Yes, yeah. less rural. And then this last, is where I am now, is the real rural parish. Mm like at the end of the diocese mm -hmm. 
and uh, after that parish is just a forest area mm. which goes on up the mountains. Mm. So a little parish which did have much really, but I thank God that I had gone through a lot of experiences in the different uh, parishes. And I think God was preparing me to be in this little place and be able to raise it. Wow. I think we have done that. So you, you were sent to America by your bishop through a program that the Pope oversees to, to help get resources for, not for your parish, but for, for the diocese. Yeah. The overall administration of the diocese needs yeah. funding, and yeah. he sent you to raise money for him. Yeah, that was in the year 2015 mm -hmm. when I came over and I went to different parishes. And first of all, I must appreciate the church in the USA. Mm -hmm. The parishes, the mm. bishops have been very good, the parishes have been very good to encourage their people to share mm. with a growing church in Africa, and that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And so the proceeds of this, uh, what we got from, from this uh, exercise, going around, sharing with our faith with the people, is able to be handed over to our bishops, mm -hmm. and then the bishop can be able to use it for the day-to-day -day pastoral needs of the diocese. And actually, we have things like the, the training of priests, seminarians, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, we have... Uh, medication for the number of priests now who are growing old. Mm -hmm. They mentioned I always pity the bishops, honestly, because uh, you are faced with the number of people who are growing old and you have to cater for them. Sure. And then, of course, uh, constructions of churches, of schools, communities, seminaries. Sure. So I think there's a lot, a whole long, big, big burden on the Sure. bishops and uh, this cooperative plan right and the bishop needs help with all that to, pressure the bishop yeah, needs a lot, to a lot of uh, bishop. whiskey yeah well, oh, no. well, <laughs> I, I wish he could but if, if he takes it's a good relief for him yes. <laughs> but the whiskey alone may not be able to help him so oh. much the next morning the whiskey will be over <laughs> and the problems will be facing him again I know <laughs> I'm just trying to be funny I yeah. try anyways yeah. You in your parish, one of the things you were telling me about that I would love you to share with everyone is uh, the truck. You have a truck. Yes. And could you tell us the story of the the pickup truck? Yes, the pickup truck. And uh, the truck, as I mentioned to you, that is a uh, it does a lot. It's a multi-purpose truck. I I said uh, the uh, the only well, I don't call it tamakaron, but Ah, yes, Tarma, a paved road. A, a paved, paved road is 20, 20 kilometers away from us. Wow. And all the roads around are Maram roads and really bad roads because we live in the mountains. Mm. And when the rains come, they spoil all the infrastructure, bridges are gone, roads are gone. So you need a strong car like that. And I remember when I came here one time, some people helped to give me a little bit of funds. And I was able to put this car back to life. Mm. Tires and do some repairs. It's five years ago anyway. A number of things have happened again. But it helped a lot. Now, this vehicle is a multi-purpose vehicle. It is a, a transport for everybody. When father is going to town, people run to cram themselves on it. Some even come earlier to book me. Father, when will you go to town so that we can have transport? We can be... So you're the local bus. Yes, so they jump in the, the mm -hmm. back of the, of the pickup. And then also, uh, it's an ambulance mm -hmm. for the people. Sometimes in the middle of the night, the parishioner comes up to tell you that, Father, my wife is in labor. And there's no other, because in our places, you will find in that whole area maybe his father and two other people who may have vehicles. The rest of them are just walking. Mm. They have nothing. So when you have a vehicle like that and the people come up, they use it mm. for that service that comes. Also, transporting the children, the nursery children, mm -hmm. and also what is necessary for them, like you saw 
in the wood. Field, firewood. Yeah, it wasn't just sort of some wood in the back of the truck. It was piled up like 20 feet up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> yes. So, a multi-purpose yeah. truck. And I, I love I love that. And I'm happy that people support yeah, me. Too. That's great. Yeah. And then when you came to America, there was a family that had recently, there was a very faithful Catholic family. They invited you into their home to eat, and they had lost yes. a child. Yes. And, and that, I, that and part actually, about what? <laughs> actually, that is the family that has invited me again to come back. Oh, yeah. So the story is that uh, in the parish of St. Patrick, Lady, I mm -hmm. met this family. And we just like always the, the goodness of your people here. We say, Father, let's take you out for breakfast. So we shared with them, and they told me about what had happened to their daughter. She had just died on the 2nd of May, mm. 2015. And what's her name again? Her name was Elizabeth Mary Claire Schickel. Elizabeth Mary Claire Schickel. Shall you spell that? She cares. I think S C H I E C K E L. She cares. And so, may she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed of the mercy of God rest, rest in, in peace. peace. Amen. Amen. And so, we went with the parent, Mr. Abraham, to the graveyard. He prayed at the tombstone of the girl. And. Uh, but this man was so good, he always was available to help me, carry me to another parish and so on. And we shared about that. So, anyway, when I went back home, I thought that was over. He, he, we, we communicate, he writes to me. And like I shared, I saw a lot of pain in the family. But I shared with them at one time, I just suggested, I said, but, well, the memory and life of this little girl can influence many young people miles away in Africa here. We can start a little thing in memory of this little girl. And, well, people kept quiet for some time, but I think they were consulting each other. I think Abraham and his wife Catherine came up and said, yes, I think, Father, let's try it and see. And they were able to send me some little money the second time. And uh, I, did, I was able to do what I did. Mm -hmm. And you talked to your bishop, your bishop approved yeah, building a the little. I bishop about it. Yeah. And he gave a blessing for it. And I kept on showing him every step we had made. Yeah. And I think that's always the best. He yeah. told us one time, said, give somebody money and that's the end. I said, what do you mean? Because you will not do yeah. what the money is meant for. And then, secondly, he will not give accountability. No. And therefore, he will shy away. He will never see Oh, you ruin people's faith. Yeah. But yeah. I, 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 I thought that is. So, so if this, I this, did that. There's these beautiful pictures I'll show you of the, uh, the what is it, grammar zone? Oh, uh, yeah. So if I did What's that, it called? What kind of school is it called? The, the school is called Elizabeth Shekel Nursery School. Ah, nursery. Yes. Elizabeth Shekel Nursery School. Yes. And it's and great. We have about 123 children. And so the, the, the parish was quiet now. It's, it's ringing with life. It was quiet and lonely <laughs> and very vibrant. You see this mm -hmm. little, little children dotting around and everywhere. Fathers come back, they are there to welcome me and so on. Mm, I, nice. If I go out to the outstations, I'm mm -hmm. given ripe bananas. <laughs> they, along and they, they are so happy to share that and so on. So mm -hmm. it is, there is some life and good. And even the parents are so happy. Mm. The parents come, they appreciate what is happening. Nice. They are able to see children reading. Yeah. Children, uh, Oh, it's so important that the early, early, early grades. Yes. That's if, if yeah, if you're if you have parents who don't know how to read, they can't teach you how to read. Yeah. And but if you can start reading when you're real little, that's when your brain is still growing, still developing. That's a yeah. super important yeah. time. Yeah. So that's awesome. Can I ask you? We might run out of batteries here, but um, I'd like to say hi to your people. 
And now your parish, you've told me this a million times and I forgot again. What's the name of your parish again, Father? It is Our Lady of Assumption. Our Lady of Assumption. Can I say hi to your? Yes, sure. Right there should be good. Exactly, Is yeah. it too much brightness behind me? No, no, it's good, you know. All yeah. right. Hmm. Hello, Our Lady of Assumption Parish in Uganda. Welcome. <laughs> so, I just want to thank you for being so nice to your pastor. I can tell he has people who are kind to him and help him to be the best priest he can be and are obedient and not stubborn and all those kinds of things. So, just thank you for being a, having a, being good people and, and supporting your priest. He's very, and I'm thank you for letting him go so he could come and hang out with me because I am inspired by him too. Um, we, it's nice to have someone to pray with. Yeah. And uh, just have company. It's nice. So, so anyways, do you have any, what, what questions yes, would I, they want I, me to? Yes, yes, I, I, I was saying, Father, I don't know. There's something that uh, has impressed me about you. Oh, yeah. I feel inspired. 2015, I was here, and again, I've been here with you, but there's something that inspires me. Mm -hmm. The way you carry out your pastoral work readily and happily. Sometimes I've been sitting down and said, but does Father have time for himself or to rest and so on? I see a sick call has come, you have jumped up. This has come, you are there and so on. What inspires you, Father? Well, um, I probably just crazy, but <laughs> um, I have my my Pepe. He did a lot. My Meme and Pepe, my grandmother and grandfather, they were very involved in the local community and helped start a credit union, Sanian's Credit Union, and uh, did all kinds of things to help out the local school and the local church and and. Um, I think that's just something they they naturally did all the time. It wasn't a big deal. It's just what they did, and they were happy people. And my father and mother are very much they're like that. They're so I, to me, it doesn't seem to be a strange thing to be doing things. But um, also, I'm motivated because I love Jesus, and I want everyone else to love Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. I want everyone to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Sometimes one of the things that motivates me, especially if I'm tired or, or there's been discouraging results, is the fear of the Lord. I noticed that in your slogan for your... Uh, for the children, for the school. For the school, it growing says... Growing in knowledge. Growing in knowledge. And fear of God. Fear of God. Fear